Welcome everyone to uh, the live video today and I hope you're all keeping okay up there uh, and down there or wherever you are in the world. Uh, so uh, I'm just again waiting for Will to give me a thumbs up uh, to let me know when we're officially live and it's all working. Uh, but we hope you're all keeping okay. So we're talking today about paintings uh, and some other paintings I've got on a go at the moment. And if anyone's got any questions, uh, start sending them in. I'm allowed to as many as I can at the end. Uh, but uh, I've got thumbs up. Right, so welcome to the live event today. And today I'm going to talk about my paintings uh, that I've got on the go and some of the process behind the paintings. These are all acrylic paintings I've got here. I also do oil paintings as well. So I'll just show you how some of these start life. Um, just going to sneak off camera for a minute. I've got drawers full of boards. And if I'm doing a particular uh, particular painting, uh, while well, I've already got my paints mixed up, I'd, I like to try and start a few different ones. Sometimes I have a plan of what's going on these paintings, and other times I'm uh, just putting down colour onto boards. So one day, when I'm in a rush to do a painting, it's a really nice to su surprise to open this drawer. Uh, and if I've got something in mind, um, that I'm going to paint and if it fits with one of these backgrounds uh, that's absolutely brilliant news for me. If I have to then paint a new background I have to new paint, paint a new background and I probably then produce more of these at the same time while I've got all the colours mixed. So these, believe it or not, are all blue. <laughs> so I'm trying to find the perfect blue. <laughs> so these are some of these are just small uh, pieces of board which you cut off bigger pieces of board. So these are all watercolour boards. As you can see we've got many many blue ones and these are all going to be for snow sort of scenes mainly or they can even be uh, sort of ski scapes. You can see I've put a bit of colour in here and that could probably end up going either way up as a bit of sunset casting on snow or sea. So this is how a lot of the paintings start life, the white piece of board and the a bit of colour and it's a really nice treat for me when I start a painting and I look in in my drawers and I've got uh, a whole load of uh, colours already laid down and frightened of white pieces of paper. But you can see quite simply with this one there's a there's a colour gone down on uh, this board and as you can see you know this is a similar sort of uh, colour and that's what happens when I put a uh, a painting on of badgers so it might start life a little bit like that and then this would be the foreground I add some detail in and I love painting these little guys badgers uh, black and white and a bit of colour simply done and make a beautiful picture so uh, that's the blues I've got a pad of greys there as well and just so you're fully aware what's going on I've got a pad of greens as well <laughs> so so there's lots of green colours here as well, bright greens, dark greens, um, you know, different, all different sort of colours. So a lot of my paintings, nearly all these, I don't know what's going on them yet. These are just colours that I've put down uh, ready for a painting or some. Um, I have planned for a painting to go on there and then I change my mind at the last minute and put something else, else on there. So uh, that's how these ones here have started life and these are about... Um, in between a quarter and a third of the way through, probably a quarter actually, uh, looking at them all. So uh, we'll start with the stokes. Have you got a nice photo of some stokes you can show as well? So I love studying stokes and uh, these are some kits just playing at a stone wall. And I use sort of a lot of photographs and studying them then to produce um, sort of an outline. And this is um, the painting I've got on the go at the moment, um, so this is three stoke kits playing in that same bit of wall in different sort of positions. Uh, but I love I love painting stokes, trying to capture their character. So this one at the moment's about a quarter of the way way through. It's not even that actually, it's probably not even a quarter of the way through. So there's a lot of work to do on this painting. I've actually put a um, I think a gouache back background on there, and I'm painting up in acrylics. And sometimes the problem I have with this one that the uh, the gouache starts moving and blending as I'm working on it. But it, it gives a nice, um, especially for drawing on there with pencil cranes, it gives a nice sort of chalky feel to it. Whereas acrylic sometimes can get a bit waterproof on there for me. 
So what we're going to look at next, otters. So this is one I'm working on on otter. I go every year to sort of study otters in Scotland, and this is one just poised on the rock, heading out to sea. Not even quartered on this one. This one's a lot of work to do yet. Uh, this has been on the go for a few years, um, and that's the thing with paintings. I can put them down for months, sometimes, sometimes years, and other times I just go straight through and finish them. Uh, but I opened the drawer the other day and Will said, oh, that's nice. So I thought I'd bring it out and show you uh, where it is up to at the moment. And uh, Will's kind of inspired me to finish that one this year, I think. So, uh, and we'll look at shorted owls. Oh, I've got some otter footage. Look at that. This is taken with a trail camera this year. Um, and this is where the, um, a little fresh water source. And wherever they drink and bathe, uh, on a freshwater source, they leave a little spring pile, uh, and that's something I absolutely love doing is tracking otters. These are otters that live in the sea, the Eurasian otter, and they live in the sea in uh, the west coast of Scotland. And I absolutely love tracking to see where they go. And this is about 50 meters away from the sea, uh, this little area where some water collects, and the otters uh, go there uh, and mark their territory. And they do it to every fresh water source that they use because they need to clean the fur off and they also need to drink. So these little precious uh, fresh water sources are very key in their territory. So that was a lovely little area. Um, and then, as I said, we're going to look, look at a shorted owl painting. And these are all at a similar stage, these paintings. They go through a little bit of, and I, I think it's a little bit of an ugly stage uh, before they start looking beautiful. Uh, but we'll just look at this footage of this. Is This is the owl that I'm painting uh, here. Uh, it just ruffled its feathers and I just sort of captured this moment where it nearly made a circle. Uh, but this is stunning footage. You can watch it breathing its feathers in the wind. It had rained all night um, and this owl was just tidying itself up and drying off, ready to go hunting. Yeah, but I love I love shorted owls. They almost look as if they've got <coughs> they almost look as if they've got makeup around their eyes, heavy mascara, uh, with that dark marking around their eyes. They're just absolutely beautiful, and I will get that really intense um, piercing look in this one's eyes. Um, stunning owls, and uh, we have some in this area at the moment. They they're mainly coming from sort of Scandinavia. The ones were here, but they also come off the moors and the higher areas and spend the winter uh, in slightly lower areas. We're not particularly low here, but we're lower than the harsher conditions where they come from and uh, Scandinavia, where it's uh, much harsher winters. So we we get them here in variable numbers over the over different years, depending on what the weather's like in Scandinavia and the vol the vol count there. All right, what's next? Have got on? Got to be this one. This is another one that's been on the go for a while, but I'll move this really close to the camera so I'll give you a really good view. So everything's opposite when you're putting it to the camera. There we go. This way, that way. That's it. So this is uh, an iguana, a marine iguana, and this is from the Galapagos Islands. And these are, uh, I've stalled on this one again because it's just taking so long to do um, all that detailing. But these are some of the photographs. I've been to the Galapagos twice. Uh, I've been in that region for two months, uh, one month at a time, and this is a really uh, stunning place. And these are just incredible. They're like dinosaurs, mini dinosaurs, absolutely amazing things. And this is, uh, you know, really special to be able to see these in real life. Uh, stunning things. Yeah, beautiful. This crab here, um, Sally Lightfoot crab. You've got to remember all these species when you're in for a bit. Uh, this one's uh, actually eating all the dead skin off the marine iguanas and you see them picking away uh, and I, lo I love that picture, it just made a quite abstract sort of picture with you know the tails and the feet and then the crab. Yeah but the colours are just amazing, I'm probably going to get some bit more of the red colours in that painting as well. Each island seemed to have different coloured uh, marine iguanas, some would have the blue in uh, and uh, um, because someone actually have a red, red in their actual um, skin, 
yes, quite incredible things really, very special. So you'll be able to go out there and see those, really special. Alright, who's next? It's got to be Fidget, running out of things. <laughs> Let's have a look at Fidget. This is a, a weasel I hand reared, and this is quite a big picture. So this is uh, really tricky at lining up with a camera. <laughs> so this is uh, Fidget, uh, a male weasel I hand reared it quite a few years ago now, 2000 and ooh, what would it be, 50? And uh, yeah, great little thing. This was him uh, when he was really quite young. Tiny, tiny little thing. So I hand reared him and he spent a lot of time in here, in my studio. Um, all the sort of weasels that we get now, we tend to get them back into the wild. Um, but they do make uh, super little friends, really. Um, he was quite small when we got him. And uh, yeah, this is him just sort of playing on the sofa, but they're full of fun, full of mischief, little characters. Um, it's a super little thing. So he used to play and play and play uh, in the, in the, especially in the studio. Um, I'd be trying to do some painting and it'd be always, I would have one hand painting and the other hand <laughs> entertaining, entertaining the weasel and trying not to let him uh, get into my paints. Uh, but this painting was sort of really inspired by uh, when I would actually uh, uh, when I would actually finish, well when he would finish playing, <laughs> and me too, he would actually curl up uh, next to my drawing board just in here on a paint rack. So this is going to be a paint rack with all of the uh, paint colours on it that I wipe the brushes off. And he would curl up in that paint rack um, and have a little sleep. So he's very intense, he would play, play, play. And then when he slept, he slept. So we did, um, you know, a few programs with him, and uh, they didn't quite believe me when I said, uh, when the weasel wants to sleep, he sleeps, and that's it. The camera crew, everything, everything has to stop. Uh, and they like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was true. Um, after about an hour and a half of showing, demonstrating how he goes through very tight and small spaces. He just had enough and uh, he went away to sleep and they were just saying oh can we just grab another shot and it's like uh, sorry I don't, I don't think so because he's now asleep uh, and they said oh we just need this extra shot and, uh, and I was like so I put my hand near him and he said <laughs> and tried biting and I said well no we'll go and have lunch let him have a sleep and then he was uh, fine to sort of do some demonstration going through little tubes and things so uh, Real character, he bit virtually everyone apart from me. He was very much my weasel, and if anyone else came near, he was like having a little mini status dog. He would uh, go and attack every single person. He bit many TV presenters, and uh, yeah, full of attitude, but a really fun little uh, creature to keep. So, nearly run out, we've got hair. So, this is another thing I love doing. Hence, all the great pile of blue, blue backgrounds down here. Move them around. Yeah, so we've got you know the background sort of blue colours. This one's going to be that way up. Uh, but I can with this one say say this one. I can then just look at this area here and just think that could be a little bit of sunlight coming through. So I'll add a li little touch of uh, warmth to that. Um, God, I can't get used to this. Uh, so I'll add a little bit of warmth in here as if the sun's coming through and then that would pick up on an animal down here. And this is um, the hair that I'm working on at the moment. And this is not got any, this is all the sort of mid-tones in there. So I need to put the dark tones and the light tones in there. And this, this hair is going to be um, nibbling on something here. So this is going to be um, like an old hedge, piece of hedge sort of leaning down and it's going to be nibbling and uh, just reaching up to nibble on a twig they will eat a lot of uh, twigs and small branches over the winter months when the snow is heavy. So this is some some clips I got quite a few years ago this of just some hairs out in the field and these were hairs caught in. This looks like a male hair up to mischief, he's looking around. Uh, so they will mate throughout the winter. I've seen baby leverets in the winter uh, many a time. So this is uh, this is before I got a video head as well, and you can tell my footage is a little bit wobbly. <laughs> so when you try and follow it, 
Uh, but this is him setting off at speed and then gathering up with some other, other hairs. Yeah, so absolutely fabulous. Um, so that gives you a little bit of an idea what goes on here around me. Sort of paintings, this is a print of one actually finished. Oh, another, probably ought to show you that one right over here. This is, this is just a print of a hair painting, but it shows you what they, what they look like when they're actually finished with all of the detail on. Because I'm only showing you a half finished paintings today. And it's nice to show you a finished one. So this is um, this was a female hair, and uh, you can see here she's made herself really compact in the weather. This was bitterly cold; it was about minus five, with quite a stiff wind blowing. And uh, I crept forward towards her on my belly for about three quarters of an hour, and ended up getting really, really close to this hair. And it was uh, super to spend the. Uh, a bit of time with her uh, in between the sort of snow blizzards. Um, this is just a print of a, a original painting, but it gives you an idea how I transform these blue pieces into works of art. I'm coming back. Don't worry, I haven't gone. All right. So, uh, is it questions next, Will? Yeah, we've got a few questions coming in. So Victoria B, who's one of our mods on mm -hmm. YouTube, says, how many times, uh, how much time daily do you devote to your paintings? Oh, that is a good question. So at the moment, I'm devoting literally uh, nearly an hour in the day to um, setting up new cameras and wiring and, uh, and filming. But I go through very intense periods of doing one thing or, or another thing. So some days then I might just paint seven days a week once I've got the, um, you know, the the wiring and the camera th sort of system. So I spend about half my time now uh, filming and doing um, camera work. Uh, and it's all the setups, the intricate setups, you know, it takes a long time. So I'm building nest boxes out of natural pieces of material, but I can sit here for some days and paint 12 hours a day as well. So it's very sort of varied. Um, but at the moment I'm outside and then soon I'll be back inside um, Working, working these paintings up and doing some commissions. So we have a question about the hairs. <coughs> um, have you ever seen white hairs? Yes, yes. So you get uh, mountain hairs uh, further north and in the Peak District and they go white in winter. And I've also um, filmed a, a white hair on the Yorkshire Worlds uh, as well. And that's a brown hair that is white and it's not an albino, it has a normal coloured eye, so it's one of these guys that is white. Uh, you do get albino brown hairs as well. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen white brown hairs, just the one. Uh, and I've heard about others, you know, quite, quite away from here on the Yorkshire Worlds, but yeah, they are around. So we have quite a few people asking about um, a painting of Barney. Do you have any any thoughts to do a painting of Barney at any time? Yeah, I'm going to have to paint Barney, I think. Yeah, yeah, I've done one. Uh, I'll have to look back and check. I think it might be him. I did one a few years ago, and uh, I, uh, I haven't got it printed out yet, but I'll, I'll have a look back and check to see if that was him, because that was in the early days when he was around, I think. Yeah. Um, what brand of gouache do you use? Gouache, I don't really use gouache that much. I use uh, Windsor & Newton gouache. I don't usually use too much gouache. I, the main paint I use is this one. So it's Liquitex acrylic and it is from the USA. So that's the one I use mainly. And then oil paints. I use a few different types of oil paints. It's absolutely to me, it's absolutely crucial with the acrylics. I only use this, uh, and I've only used this for the last God, nearly 30 years I've been using this. So, uh, and the other paints that I use are the oil paints. This is less crucial. Um, but this is one that I use. Is it? <laughs> it, it obviously is, because I've got it. Um, yeah, these ones. I find these ones very good. I get these from a shop in London, and they're Robson and Co. Limited. And uh, but I also use um, Windsor and Newton. And for really, really big paintings, I sometimes have used Spectrum. 
Uh, but yeah, lots, there's lots of different makes of the oil paints that I use. And if you mix them all in together, you can mix different types of acrylic in together. Um, but this is, this is the best stuff. Um, Amethyst Girl, who's one of our YouTube mods, asks, yeah. do you have days off where you just don't want to paint? <laughs> no. uh, do you carry on regardless, or do you have a break? Uh, from painting, maybe, and I do film. I don't have days off, though. That just doesn't, <laughs> doesn't happen. <laughs> um, yeah, days off. I think I've had maybe two this year. Half a day on Christmas Day, and uh, yeah, days off don't happen. Not, not in this line of work. Wildlife continues, and I continue to try and follow it and film it. Yeah. Um, do you go through phases of a favourite subject to paint? Uh, yeah, probably do. Um, yeah, just looking around what I've done. Probably I've painted a l especially drawings of roe deer over the years. I love roe deer and love the shapes that they form. You know, these beautiful lines and angles. Done a lot of badgers, done a lot of barn owls obviously, but I like to, I like to do lots of different things really. Um, this is one of my favourites from um, recent times, which this is just a print of it again, and this is a, I mean, you've probably seen this one already, everyone, this is Peregrine Falcon over uh, Salt End Chemical Park in Hulse. This is a really industrial site, and I loved uh, painting all of the backdrop on it, over there. Um, that's the Humber Estuary in the background, and then all of the, um, you know, the industrial type buildings and the backdrop of that, which is very different from uh, the thing, stuff I'm usually doing, which is more natural. So I enjoy doing that one. Um, so somebody on Facebook has asked, do you have any other artists in the family? Oh, gosh, could have had that question before and I could have shown you some things, <laughs> maybe on another one. Uh, so my, uh, uh, both grandparents were um, very artistic in different ways, not for wildlife. Uh, but my dad's mother, my granny, was uh, very talented at doing uh, bronze portraits of uh, sculptures in bronze uh, and also at painting, but her main thing was sculpting. And we're actually, uh, <laughs> this is really funny, we're actually streaming uh, from her sculpting table. We've got Will's laptop sat on it here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is Granny, granny Fuller's sculpting table, which will be... It's a lot older than Will, it's probably even older than me. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we've got a bit of Granny Fuller with us here at the moment. So, and my mother's uh, mother was a very talented sort of painter as well, landscapes and things. Uh, but my granny was one of five, and four of them were very, very artistic. So, it's trickled down, but I would say, uh, talent-wise is about 15%, and the rest of it is work and practice and you literally just can't do this overnight. You've got to really hone your skills and practice, practice, practice. Uh, yeah, that's the advice. <laughs> so we have one final question here, which is just about the owls. Um, are the owls used to you when you put the food out? Oh, very much so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, and we can demonstrate that probably more in the summer months. Uh, Bomber will literally, uh, I haven't had him take food out of my hands yet, but he's, he, I probably could train him to do that, but I don't want him to train him to do that uh, because he's quite he's quite boisterous, shall we say, and I don't want to be uh, ever caught around the uh, uh, the face or the eyes by him if he gets confused at any point. But he'll literally come he'll come to my feet for food, uh, and he'll actually land um, very. I was going to say from about here to Willoway, but you can't see him. <laughs> he'll land from here to the window away from me. Um, just there within six or seven feet if I sit still. If I pop food out and he's feeding chicks, he'll literally come very, very close to me. So I used to do falconry, um, so this is a little bit like falconry with wild birds, but the barn owls all fly around when I'm out there on an evening. It's something that you can't see necessarily online or hear as much, but they're, they're all calling at me and I whistle, whistle back at them and they, uh, they come down uh, and very much aware of who I am. And uh, yeah, I've had a female kestrel used to actually, um, not this female kestrel, the one before, used to actually um, call at me for food in the same way she called for the, called at her mates. So uh, yeah, they all very much recognise me. We've got some happy birthdays as well, I think, haven't we? Have we? Yeah. Which one is it today? What day are we? Oh, uh, haven't we? It's Dagmar's birthday today. I'm sure it right. is. Yeah, so happy birthday, Dagmar. And Jean Thorpe as well, happy birthday. Oh, really? Yeah, so we have, we have a few birthdays. 
And is it Anita's birthday? Is that tomorrow or Thursday? I think I'll have to check. Oh, come on, Will. I thought you'd be on this. I haven't got it on here. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Anita, anyway. I think it's uh, tomorrow. Uh, if not, it's uh, Thursday. So uh, there's the happy birthdays. Um, yes, that's, that's it for today. The only thing I want to do, and I don't want to end on sad news, but I think I, I should mention it, is uh, we've lost Drax, unfortunately, the, the female bow now. She was put to sleep yesterday, so that was a really, you know, sad moment for us all. We tried, the vets really tried, and Jean really tried, but her, her respiratory problems just kept coming back. Uh, and there's no way, in, she can't really even keep her in captivity, never mind let her out into the wild, because she was just getting full of... Um, uh, sort of not nice stuff, you know, full of yuck in a in a respiratory sort of tracks. Um, so that was a really sad sort of thing. But we we will bring you everything that's real here. Uh, we don't want anything too real at the moment. There's enough going on in the world at the moment. Uh, but we will bring everything that happens that's actually real life here. And we will obviously try and bring you more happy moments than sudden moments. So. Uh, Thanks for everyone that's for uh, watching and we'll catch up with you on Thursday. And remember in the day